uh, like we always do at this time, every time we strive to do it. What up, ladies and gentlemen? It's your boy, Casa Don. Now, as y'all know, we got a lot of stuff that's going on. The news line saying that they sending people out there to North Carolina to help them people, which we know they're not. When are they going to get some help out there? Got people out there really stuck. You got people out there trying to get them help. Y'all arresting them. What is this all about? Go out there and worry about the border or something. Do something constructive. Because, I mean, and if you think about it, have fun. Be who you are. Because I can almost guarantee this will be the last time that I get to do it. So, hey, enjoy. But the state of North Carolina, the, 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 the red state, it was going to go red. They know that. Swiped out three towns. People are missing. They still don't know where they at. They told us they're gonna help the people that is um the people in the in the in, in the uh, I guess the the community, and then they're gonna help out the people that's low budget and all this shit first. When everybody is in the same category, ain't no low budget. Everybody is messed up. Everybody is devastated. Everybody needs help right now. Not too much. Listen. The world is so very different now. Remember Shaquille O'Neal? This is my boy. He went to the same school I went to in New Jersey. You know what I'm saying? 07, 103, Cab the Street, Cab the Middle, all that good shit. But Shaquille O'Neal, he's a big teddy bear. He's a big, very nice guy, right? No. Shaquille O'Neal is a gangster before anything, and I respect him as a gangster. I just want to share light to this because people be thinking because a nigga smile, laugh, and play all the time that they can play with them or he's a joke or he won't mess you up or something like that. I'm going to show y'all something about Shaquille O'Neal. It shots out the hood, boy. Watch this shit. Basketball legend Shaquille O'Neal. Now Shaq was a beast on the court and is still considered one of the greatest NBA players of all time. Back in the summer of 96, when Shaq was a free agent after leaving the Orlando Magic, everyone was wondering where he'd go next. It didn't take long before he signed a massive seven-year deal worth $120 million with the Los Angeles Lakers. This move was a game changer and Shaq didn't just have success, he dominated. From 2000 to 2002, he led the Lakers to three straight NBA championships and was named the finals MVP each time. But what many people don't know is that during his time in LA, Shaq actually got tight with a notorious gang known as the Main Street Mafia Crips. The Main Street Mafia Crips are based on the east side of South Central LA and they're known for making serious money moves. Shaq got especially close to a high-ranking member named Ladell Rose, aka Del Dog. Del Dog was a hustler through and through. He had his hands in multiple businesses, owned homes and flashy cars, and even had the first Rolls Royce in South Central. He was also deep in the entertainment world, rubbing shoulders with big names like Ice Cube, Snoop Dogg, and Steve Harvey. You go to a guy like Dale when you got a problem. They say, look, man, I'm having a problem. I can't get this done because this guy's over here doing this. I can't get this done because that guy's doing that. Shaq and Del Dog, along with other Main Street members, formed a strong bond. Shaq got... Now, as y'all see, even Steve Harvey was out there checking them. I can't get this done. I can't get that done. I'm calling the gangsters. And the gangsters can. Now, Shaquille O'Neal, he had a record label. I know it to be Twism, but he had another record label, I guess like a brand, that he started with another gentleman that they're going to talk about in a few seconds. And they had a big falling out. This guy was part of the gang. He was gang gang. And then, after him and Shaq's falling out, pull Shaq's head down because Shaq is a big motherfucker. After they falling out, something bad happened to that guy. Something bad happened to him. I'm going to let them talk and then we get into it. Got protection and street credibility, while Main Street got business deals and industry connections through him. For a while, things were smooth. Shaq was reaping the benefits of his association with Main Street, and the gang was cashing in too. But then things started to go south. Shaq and his business partner, Mark Stevens, owned a record label called Deja, and they had an agreement with a Main Street member named Robert Ross, also known as Stutterbox. The deal was that Stutterbox would get a 50% cut of the profits for every artist he brought to the label. Stutterbox claimed he brought Ray J to the label, but he got cut out of the deal, which created bad blood between him and Shaq. While Shaq remained cool with Delta dog and other Main Street members, Stutterbox was still feeling some type of way and wanted what he thought was his due. Nigga, what you wanted? That nigga wanted $3,000 or Ray J, $6,000 he made off that no Man, yo, Brody. Hey, hey, Stutter, check this out. No disrespect to you, bro. Straight crippling. No, no disrespect to you. Listen, bro. 
If I had one wish, you could be friends. You ain't get ends. Anyway, y'all was fighting over Ray J, nigga. <laughs> this shit crazy. So he decided to blackmail Shaq. Apparently, Shaq had been bringing women to Stutterbox's house and having relations with them, all while he was still married to his wife, Shawnee. Stutterbox had security cameras all over his place and claimed to have caught Shaq in the act on tape in July of 2007. He threatened to release the footage unless Shaq paid up. Things escalated quickly. On February 11, 2008, Del Dog and some other Main Street members cornered Stutterbox at a Pink Dot convenience store on Sunset Boulevard in Hollywood. They rolled up on him, guns drawn, and forced their way into his Rolls Royce. They made him drive to Del Dog's house in South Central, and once there, Del Dog pissed Pistol whipped him, demanding the tape and $100,000. Stutterbox promised to get the tape and bring it back to them, but the crew wasn't taking any chances. They took his Rolex, his diamond chain, his earrings, and $15,000 in cash before letting him go. After the beatdown, Stutterbox went straight to the police. Like a rat would do. That nigga went right to the police, but I remind you, they kidnapped this nigga, robbed him, and then let him go. Gangsterism gone wrong. <laughs> He showed up at the 77th Street Division station with a bloody face and torn up clothes, telling the cops everything that had gone down. As a result, all seven of the Main Street guys were hit with charges for robbery, kidnapping, assault, and conspiracy. Stutterbox didn't just stop at reporting the attack. He went all in, implicating Shaq by claiming that Del Dog and the other Main Street guys were acting on Shaq's orders. He even told investigators that when he and Shaq were on better terms, Shaq had asked him and his crew to do all kinds of dirty work. He mentioned some pretty wild stuff, like Shaq allegedly wanting them to kill a member of the downtown gangster Crips because this guy had disrespected Shaq in front of his wife Shawnee, and that wasn't all. Shutterbox claimed Shaq also wanted them to kill a woman he had once gotten pregnant. And if that wasn't enough, Stutterbox even said Shaq asked them to break an NBA player's shooting arm. He basically painted a picture of Shaq as this puppet master pulling strings behind the scenes, asking for some really extreme favors. Damn. Like, this is the part of Shaq nobody knows about. You feel what I'm saying? At that time, Shaq and Shawnee were going through a messy divorce, and things were getting even more complicated. Stutterbox claimed he started seeing Shawnee romantically, and Shaq found out because he had hired a private investigator to- Now this video is for commentation purposes, y'all. This video is for commentation purposes, protected by the copyright acts under the 107. Please. To follow them. This, according to Stutterbox, only fueled Shaq's anger towards him, and might have been the reason Shaq allegedly wanted him kidnapped and- but when all this came to light, both Shaq and his business partner, Mark Stevens, denied knowing anything about the attacks. Shaq insisted that while he had met a few Main Street members during community events like toy drives in South Central, he didn't have any deep personal connections with them. Meanwhile, the FBI was already building a case against the Main Street Mafia Crips. They had wiretaps on Del Dog's phone and heard him talking to Mark about how Stutterbox had flipped and was now cooperating with the cops. They also pulled down phone records, showing multiple calls between Mark and Del Dog around the time of the assault on Stutterbox. Despite all this, neither Shaq nor Mark were ever charged in connection with the case. Stutterbox later admitted to the investigators that he was bluffing about having a tape of Shaq cheating. He explained that the security camera at his house only recorded in cycles and the footage he claimed to have no longer existed. Dur they paid that boy to shut up because he wanted his money for Ray J. Shaq gave him that $5,000, he went his way, man. During the trial, Stutterbox took the stand against the other Main Street members, detailing the attack on him. But the defense didn't waste any time after going after his credibility. They brought up his lengthy criminal record and labeled him a liar, using his bogus claim about the tape as proof that he couldn't be trusted. In the end, Del Dog and the others were found not guilty of all charges. Fast forward to July 2011, Stutterbox decided to sue Shaq for failing to honor what he called an oral contract and for allegedly having him assaulted. But the lawsuit didn't go anywhere. It got dismissed because he filed it after the statute of limitations had Expired. Things took another turn on July 8, 2015, when Del Dog was tragically shot and killed around 11.30 p.m. near the intersection of Broadway and Century Boulevard. I won't dive into all the details, but I will say this. It wasn't gang-related, and Del Dog apparently knew the person who shot him. I'm sure he did. And I'm sure Shaq did, too. They said Shaq ass was a gang mogul. Seven men belonging to the South Los Angeles street gang have been charged with kidnapping and other crimes after they allegedly abducted a man who claimed he had a sex tape with the f of the former Lakers center, Shaquille O'Neal, according to a web article released by the Los Angeles Times Tuesday night. Hmm. He went into details. He was in there running his mouth like butter. Hey, 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 guess what, y'all? Guess what? I swear to God, guess what? They sell Italian beef up there. I'm gonna go, yo. The Italian beef is a roast beef sandwich, y'all. Stop it. So niggas is snitching for a roast beef sandwich, y'all. I finally found out what it was. It's a roast, a roast beef sandwich with with onions and oh man. 
a roast beef sandwich. Liddell Rose, who prosecutors said was the leader of the Main Street Mafia Crip Gang, is accused of the criminal complaint filed in February of direct members to kidnap, beat, and rob the victim. Details of the case, but anyway, long story short, they beat the case. Because you know why? You know why? Shaq got clout. Shaq, Shaq even went on to become an honorary police officer after all this hit. He was under investigation by the feds. Shaquille O'Neal, well, now, I would say, is one of the baddest men I know in the NBA who wasn't scared to say, I'm a gangster, Grandpa, and I'm proud of it. <laughs> Shouts out to Shaquille O'Neal. This your boy, Costa Down. Like, share, subscribe. Make sure you smash the like button. Make sure you share the video. Thank you to everybody who's been doing it. Thank you to, I know the numbers is looking crazy, but trust me, we doing good. Don't worry about it. We good. We good. We good. We good. We ain't got to get fake views and all that bullshit. We're good. Thank you to everybody who support my channel. Thank you to Georgia Davis. Thank you to Carla Houston. Thank you to Lamont, the real YT. Thank you to my boy G-Boy Films. Thank you to my homeboy, to my homeboy, everybody, man. All y'all. Y'all know who y'all are, man. Everybody who come through faithfully. Salute to y'all. To my man, I am BMF. Salute to you, bro. Keep doing what you're doing. There's so many other people that I want to say y'all names, but you know, right now, I just finished smoking, and I have my coffee. So I got to get that done. Salute, got back. Shoot, you know how we do. I'm gone.